So this is part two of lesson objective um, G um, from the OCR specification in biotechnology and cloning. Um, so we're carrying on looking at CO dilutions. Now, it's really important we know why we do a CO dilution um, and why, which which disc sh should, which, which um, dish here should we be choosing in order to make our prediction of how many colonies were in the original solution. So guys, that, this one is from the mark scheme, this bit here. So we need to choose the the dish that contains the most countable colonies because uh, this will have the smallest effects on anomalies and be more representative of the larger population. So for example, in this one, I'd probably use the 71 um, and then I would multiply it back up by the dilution factor to find out how much is in the original population. So here's an example of a typical question that you might get here. Uh, if you want to pause and read it, by all means, please do. But um, in order to get there, you need to work out how many times it's been diluted. So, for example, here, uh, 0.1, because 0.1 is removed, it's been diluted, it's been um, reduced by a factor of 100. Um, here, it's been diluted by a factor of, uh, of 10, sorry. And then also here, it's been diluted by a factor of 10. All right, so when you're calculating this, I'll be doing 20 because I've got 20 colonies here times 100 because that's the dilution factor here times 10 here because that's the dilution factor there times 10 there because that's the dilution factor here and then I'm also going to times it by 30 because it was 1 taken from 30 centimetres cubed so I should have 6 times 10 to the power of 6 for that one <clears throat> here's another example if you want to pause and give it a try using the same theory that you've just looked at in the previous question this is what we should get. And then again, here, if you want to pause this one, have a go. And the number we should be getting is this. Okay. So um, examples of culturing in the lab um, that you should be able to do for your pack seven. There are a number of different things you can do. You can do the pour plate, street plate, or the lawn plate. This is an example of the pour plate. And um, a pour plate, you would get a bacterial sample. Uh, you pour it into a sterile plate. You'd swirl it, putting it on the desk with the lid on and swirl it just nice and gently. And then you'd incubate it until the colonies grow. Now, um, we use pour plates um, to identify the number of colony forming units within a solution. And this may involve CO dilution. So if we just go back to this one, you can see each one of these would be a different pour plate using these different solutions. OK, so that's an example of why we'd use pour plates. Another example is a lawn plate. And this, again, you'd have your suspension of bacterial cells. You'd put them into the agar gel and you'd use something called a spreader to make sure that you, you're spreading out the bacterial colonies. And um, this is used um, to in genetic engineering uh, to help to identify uh, colonies normally that have some kind of a marker on there, like a green fluorescent protein. Another one is an example of a street plate. Now, a street plate, this is used to separate or isolate colonies of bacteria. So you start off with a concentrated sample taken directly from the bacterial solution. You then sterilize your um, loop in a Bunsen burner and then you drag across part of that. You, you drag it across for number two there. You'd flame it again and then drag it across for number three. You'd flame it again and then drag it across for number four. And then you'd see here in number four that you'd have single colonies of bacteria. Now, when we're culturing microorganisms, it's really important that we use aseptic conditions. And these are the reasons why we avoid aseptic conditions. Um, we want to avoid them because um, it would be competing for nutrients. It would change the conditions and um, it might contaminate the batch. That's some of that specific to the uh, fermenter. We need to incubate our plates at 35 degrees so we don't create human pathogens. We need to flame the neck of the um, bacterial solution we're using in the first place um, due to the air expanding and pushing bacteria away. It also kills it on the neck. The lid of the petri should only lift up very, very slightly to avoid contamination with the air. And when incubating the plate, we should be keeping it upside down to prevent the agar gel from, from drying out. So that's the end of Less Objective G. Remember in your exam, guys, no amount, size, it or they. And good luck for your exams. Okay, so batch and continuous, make sure you know the difference between the two. Good luck.